You know what this line of code does. It imports the daytime module from the Python standard library. But how does that work? And why does it work? In what way does your program change when importing modules? What exactly happens in the background when the import statement is executed? In this video you get answers to these questions. Let me start with an obvious question. What is the purpose of modules? Well, modules have many purposes, but the most important one might surprise you. It is to allow namespacing. But what does that mean? I'll get back to this question a couple of times during this video. But let me show you a scenario that you probably have experienced yourself. Here is a Python script. Over time, the script grows. To keep it readable, you split it up into two files. You now have two Python files and you know how to connect them. You use an import statement. Now I bet that you have done this many times for two reasons. To maintain readability and to reuse your code. But if I look up modules in the Python documentation, the emphasis is on organizing code. To show why modules play such an important role in organizing code, let me show you what happens when I import a module. But first I have to tell you what kind of modules there are in Python. When Python is installed, you get access to something called the Python Standard Library. The Python Standard Library contains built-in functions like len and print, built-in types like integers and strings, and then there are modules like datetime and random. The Python documentation shows an overview of the components in the standard library. But there is a problem with this list. Let me zoom out. The list is huge. By the way, I'll put links to all the documentation in the description. Some of the components you see are available without importing anything in Python. Examples are built-in types like ints and strings, and some need to be imported. In this video, I will show modules that have to be imported. Modules that need to be imported can again be divided into two categories. Some modules are built into the interpreter. An example of such a module is the sys module. Sys is built directly into the Python interpreter, but still needs to be imported. And then there are modules that are provided as Python files on your hard disk. An example is the datetime module, and I'll show where it is located in a minute. The Python documentation describes that built-in modules are not part of the core of the language, but are built into the interpreter, nevertheless, for optimization purposes. As I said, in this video I'm not going to show built-in modules. Instead, I will focus on the second kind of modules. Modules that are Python files on your hard disk. So, the first question is, where on your hard disk? Well, you can ask Python. I start a Python session and import sys. Ironically, sys is a built-in module of which I just said I will not show in this video. I'm only going to use it to show the location of the other modules. I ask for sys.path. And the result is a list of paths. The list contains locations where Python will search for modules. Notice the first empty string. The empty string makes Python also search for modules in the current working directory. This allows you to create and store modules in your project directory. Notice this folder. This is the location of the standard library modules on my Mac. That is where Python will find modules like the datetime module. Notice the last folder. This is where pip install packages are searched. I will limit this tutorial to importing modules from your project directory and from the standard library. And the first module I will import is the daytime module. Let me show you. Look at this code. It has variables a and b. I use the dir function to get a list of all the names in the current local scope. I execute the code. 
And here is the result. By default, Python programs have access to objects like you see in the result. And notice that the names of variables a and b also show up here. I import datetime. I execute the code again. Look at the result. Datetime is added to the list of names. I print datetime and execute the code again. Python shows that datetime is a module and where it was loaded from. Notice the location is one of the locations from sys.path. There is much more to tell about the import mechanism behind the import statement, and I'll come back to that. But first, I'd like to show you why it is important that the name of datetime was added in the local scope. Once I import datetime, I can use it like this. I execute the code. And here is the result. Notice that the datetime module was accessed by typing datetime in the code. In my beginner's course, I tell my students that this is a reference to the module. But that is not completely true. Do you remember that the import statement created a name in the local scope? It is the datetime name in the local scope that is referenced from the code. And this can be proved with a variation on this code you have probably seen before. When datetime was imported, Python added a datetime name to the local scope. The name is known as the identifier and is the same as the module name. But I can change the identifier name like this. I execute the code. Look at the name in the local scope. The datetime module is now imported and can be referenced by using dt. If you have ever worked with a library like NumPy, perhaps you have seen identifier changes like these. They allow you to use the np identifier when calling functions. If you would not have changed the identifier, the code would look like this. Changing the identifier saves you characters down the line, but readers of the code have to guess what np is. As always, it is up to you to decide what variant is better in your project. I'll get back to the datetime example. Whether you change the identifier or not, all the datetime functionality is accessible by using the identifier name. In this example, I will not change the identifier and leave the name datetime that can now serve as a namespace. Look at this example. Main imports datetime. All functions are hidden behind the datetime name. If this system was not in place, individual references would have to be created to all functions in the datetime module. Now imagine what would happen once you start importing many modules. Main would be flooded with names in the local scope. So luckily, importing modules binds them to a single name. This is what allows to create hierarchies. Each node in the tree is a namespace, and it is one of the keys to organizing code. By the way, if it is your goal to import certain functions from another module into your local scope, you can use the syntax like you see here. Notice that only the add function is added as a name in the local scope. By deliberately importing functions, you have full control over the names in your local scope. You have seen how to use the daytime module from the standard library. But you know there are many more modules in Python. So if you want to know if each of these modules indeed has its own Python file, go to the folder found with the sys.path command and check out the list yourself. To dive deeper into the import mechanism, I will create a module in my project directory. I start by creating Python file calculator.py. Then I create a script called main.py. Let me put them next to each other. 
The calculator module has an add function and a subtract function. I save the file and go to main.py. Here I import calculator and execute the code. It looks like nothing happened, but in fact, many things have happened. The first thing you notice is the cache folder that was created by Python. The folder will be created automatically when your folder contains at least one module in the project folder. Watch what happens when I remove the folder and run the code again. The cache folder is created again. The folder contains a pike file, which is a compiled version of the calculator module. This is a binary file and you cannot look into it with a text editor. Pike files will be recompiled automatically whenever your code is updated. Notice that the import statement does not contain the .py extension. You probably already have guessed that Python looks for a Python file with the name of the import that has extension.py. Let me show you that calculator has been added to the local scope. And I am able to use it like this. The calculator name serves as a namespace and both functions are hidden behind it. When I started working with Python, I did not worry too much about the mechanism behind importing. All I cared about was the convention that an import statement searches for a Python file with the name of the module with extension.py and everything works automatically. And if you are just starting with Python, this might be all the information you need at this point. But between creating a module and getting the result in the terminal, many things have happened under the hood. And if you want to take a deeper dive into the importing mechanism, click on the screen right now and we'll see each other in the next video.